You know, getting a new console used to be such a fun experience. You'd open up that box, smell that weird new console smell, hook the thing up, and be greeted by the console menu that you'd be spending the next several years of your life messing around with. Console menus used to be so fun, man. Sometimes they'd have these cute little details you could spend hours messing with. Sometimes there'd be these unique little applications and features you could mess around with that, sure, didn't necessarily correlate to games themselves, but were so fun and memorable that you could get just as many memories out of them. And best of all, each console had its own unique atmosphere, whether it was cute, eerie, or ethereal, every console menu was just oozing with so much love, so much personality, it was great. You could tell that the people designing the UI wanted the console itself to be just as memorable as the games you were playing on it, and that was wonderful. And then I turn on my Switch and I'm met with this boring, empty wasteland of a console menu, and I feel nothing. Now, don't get me wrong here, I love the Switch. In terms of games, the thing has so many fan freaking tastic titles. I mean, it has Luigi's Mansion 3, which, like, come on, that's already enough on its own. But on top of that, we've got Fire Emblem, Xenoblade Chronicles 2, Mario Odyssey, Breath of the Wild. Like, being real here, it might end up becoming one of my favorite console libraries of all time. That being said, I hate this menu and everything it represents. Nintendo especially used to be so good at console menus, and now we have this. There's no personality, no music, no charm, nothing. Yes, indeed, the Switch was just the next victim of the oversimplification trend. In an effort to create simple, clean UI that anyone could understand, they sucked the heart and soul right out of the menu. And like, they didn't even do it that well either. The eShop is a freaking mess to navigate, massive features are still just missing for some reason, and the one thing it had going for it, the clean design, was ruined by this disgusting little button right here. Like, it doesn't even fit with the established design? What the heck were they thinking with this? The Switch menu as it exists now is an empty husk built purely to get you into the game as quickly as possible and nothing else. No joy, no fun, no charm. I guess that just isn't allowed anymore. And it ain't just Nintendo who's doing this. It seems that everyone's forgotten that this used to be fun. But no, gotta oversimplify it because that's what's hip, I guess. And like, I don't even know if anyone else in the world even cares about this issue. Honestly, I've barely seen anybody talk about this. I might really be alone on this one, but if that's the case, then so be it. I'm gonna try my best here to convince at least one of you that this is a dumb little subject that actually matters. So sit tight, because we're going back in time to show just how great console menus used to be, and just where it all went wrong. So I think it's only fitting to head back to the early 2000s, where the first major console menus made their appearance. Like, don't get me wrong, there were a couple pretty basic menus before this, but they were nothing compared to what the 7th generation of consoles would bring to the table. And why not start this little journey with the first console menu I ever saw, and the first console I ever played? HA! <laughs> you thought! Yeah, so despite being more of a Nintendo guy nowadays, my first console was actually the PlayStation 2. And to be fair, I loved that thing as well. I mean, sure, a lot of the games I got for it were license-based garbage, but hey, some of it was pretty alright, I guess. And it was here that I found my love of 3D platformers with the incredibly underappreciated Sly Cooper games. But we're not here to talk about that, we're here to talk about this menu. And oh boy, did it know how to leave an impression. A very very loud one. Right out the gate it comes blaring with this loud as heck opening that never failed to leave me scrambling for the volume button so no one would find out that I was playing well past my bedtime. It certainly left an impression though. Now, whether that's a good thing is debatable, but hey, it left one. Now, beyond the introduction, the whole presentation of this console is somewhat eerie actually. Like, the tone always felt really alien to me, you know? Although, on the lighter side of things, I always liked how the memory card had these cute little 3D models for all the games on it. Like, they could have just slapped a little JPEG of the game's logo and that's it, but nah. You get these instead, which are a hundred times cooler. And speaking of Alien, boy oh boy, that pretty much seems like it was the theme of this generation. Like, look at the original Xbox menu, it's Alien as frick, and it's also, you know, kinda ugly, but still Alien. But I know what you're waiting for here, so I'll just get on to it. Ah, the GameCube menu. So simple, yet so freaking cool. That intro is as classic as classic can be, and the neat little details you can actually change the sound effects that play if you do some funky stuff with the controllers. And that menu is perfection. The visual presentation and the music in the background combine to make this sound that's very ethereal, you know? Like, it's just so calming to listen to, but it still manages to feel alien like the other two, but in a completely different kind of way, which I appreciate. Now, can I be real for a second here? This menu is so freaking calming to me. 
I remember I would sometimes just leave it on the menu for a while after playing a game just to vibe with it. That probably sounds kinda weird, but I don't care, if you never did that, you freaking missed out. Now, I'll admit, there's not a ton else to do on these menus besides look at what's going on in the memory card or vibe to the music or whatever, but I think the atmosphere of these menus at least help make up for it. And hey, despite being from the early 2000s, they have almost as many features as the Switch has while not being as boring either. Regardless, while this was definitely a good start, they were nothing compared to what would come next with Nintendo's next console. This right here is the place I spent an absurd amount of time as a kid. I still remember the first time I got to play the Wii, man. My friend MJ got a hold of one for Christmas and I rushed right out the door to go give the console a spin. It was honestly wonderful. The motion controls blew all of us away and we spent the entire night just playing Wii Sports and having a good time. Man, I honestly kind of miss getting that excited about things. This menu never fails to bring me right back to that time either. The presentation here is just cute as fuck. Brick. Everything is placed inside these little TV channel icons, and even cooler is that every game and application has its own little animation or sound effect. I remember part of the excitement of getting a new game was seeing what cool thing they do with it for the game channel icon. It was a neat little detail that I almost never hear anybody mention about the console, but it used to get me so freaking pumped up to play something. Ugh, this is so freaking cool! And what was even cooler was that there was way more to do with the console than just play games. It was filled with all these dumb little applications to waste your time away, and waste my time away, I did. My friends and I spent hours messing around in the Mii channel trying to make characters we knew or just trying to make absolute abominations. As simple as it seems now, the ability to make random characters and then use them in games was super neat. But honestly, even without that, we probably still would have had a blast just messing around with it. And you see, that's the thing. While at first glance, a lot of these seemed kind of worthless, it was always so awesome to be able to just mess around with something. Even if we weren't in the mood to play, we could always go screw around with photos in the photo channel, listen to the absolute bop that was the Wii Shop channel theme while looking at games we couldn't afford, or even just checking the weather, because why not, I guess. Like, yeah, I get that none of this is mind-blowing or anything, but it's stuff like this that made a console feel special. It wasn't just a box that played games, it was packed with its own unique charm. It was also fun, which, you know, I guess just isn't a priority anymore. But this generation is where the first signs of trouble appeared. Not with Sony, nah, the PS3 menu is fine, if a little less charming. No, I'm talking about this multimedia device. Oh, I'm sorry, I meant game console, because, you know, that's what this menu screams. Okay, no beating around the bush here, the 360 menu is boring. It just reeks of the simplicity and blandness that would soon take over these menus like a virus. Like, ooh, charm, scary, can't have that. Here's some movies you can watch, though. Don't want you hurting yourself. Ugh, you're lucky you have Halo 3. But the time for fun menus wasn't quite over yet. After all, if Nintendo was going to succumb to the dirty plague that was over simplicity, they were going to go out with not one, but two final bangs. Oh, what, you forgot about this one? Well, you shouldn't have. So after the DS, which had, well, a menu, Nintendo put out the DSi, which had its own cute little menu. It wasn't anything too shocking or anything, but it did have Flipnote Studio, which was the bomb. Still, there's room for improvement here, you know? And just like that, Boom, the 3DS. This has to be the most underappreciated game console menu I've ever seen. Like, sure, people might talk about the GameCube or the Wii, but I'd argue this is the best one they've ever made and it's not even close. The theme with the 3DS menu seems to be taking the DSi menu and the Wii menu and making them do unspeakable things. And then the result is this cute little menu. Game icons are in these cute little squares, similar to the Wii menu, but now each game comes with its own little cute 3D model and musical theme when you highlight it on the menu. You can even blow into the mic and make it spin, which is neat, if kind of useless. This is like a logical extension of the Wii menu, but with its own added charm. And that doesn't just end here with these game icons. If you thought the Wii menu had a lot of stuff to mess with, oh baby, you ain't seen nothing yet. This console is just jam-packed with so much dumb stuff to mess with. Like honestly, let's really take a look at this, okay? Want to listen to music? Well, the 3DS sound app allows you to do just that, while also letting you screw around with the audio as well. You can even play the Game & Watch game Ball if you want to, because why not, I guess. Real talk, I didn't have an iPod as a kid, so this is sadly how I listened to most of the music while I was doing stuff. And 90% of it was Minecraft parodies, so, you know, super cool. The 3DS also had a camera app where you could take these 
gorgeous photos at a clean 240p and then mess around with them. The system also had its own online shop with the eShop, which is pretty neat, though we aren't at the best eShop yet, just give it a bit. The system also kept track of your playtime with the activity log so you could see the whoa, what the frick? Oh hey duo, did you like Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon? Oh, well, I don't know, let me ask the 148 hours I spent on it, like, what the frick? But maybe you want to play some actual, well, games. Well, the 3DS came pre-installed with not one, but two weird little experimental titles that I don't think anybody remembers. Face Raiders was a cute little shooter game where you could shoot the faces of friends, family, Morgan Freeman. Truly, the possibilities are endless. But that's not the real stuff. You want to unearth some forgotten memories here? Boom. Forgot about these, didn't you? Don't worry, I also did. Being real though, the AR games kind of blew my mind as a kid and they were pretty neat. Haha <laughs> Mario, you're so cute. What are you doing in that jar? Mario, please run. But nothing can beat the king of all bonus applications, Street Pass. Pass another person with a 3DS and boom, their me shows up in your plaza, allowing you to not only play these cute little games, but it also would share data with actual games that you bought, allowing you to get cool items, fight their custom characters, share race times. Like this was such a cool little feature, and I'm really sad that they didn't bring it back for the Switch. And I know you're like, hey Duo, but what about that other little icon up there? What is that? Shh, we're not there yet. Like, being real here, there's just so much weird stuff to mess around with on the 3DS. Like, seriously, they didn't need to do this much, but they did, and that's freaking rad. But you might be thinking, but what if this menu is too boring for me? What if I wanted Ace Attorney music on the menu instead? The future is now. Yes, themes. Nintendo had a whole shop dedicated to customizing your 3DS with these cute little themes that changed not just the music and sound effects, but the entire visual presentation of the menu as well. Like, do you see what I mean with this? Look at the Switch with its nothing presentation and tell me that that's better than this. The 3DS has a freaking masterpiece of a console menu, and it doesn't get enough love for it. Now, sadly, the next consoles from Sony and Microsoft were slowly heading towards that boring oversimplicity, but hold your horses there, Nintendo wasn't done yet. After all, they had one final send-off that, while not quite as cool as their last couple, still has at least a little bit of that same heart. Hey, hey, wait a minute, what are you doing? Ah, uh, the Wii U, the console that I loved and everybody else hated. Seriously though, I know it's easy to clown on it now, but the thing had a banging library, a pretty cool controller, and it has hands down the coolest collection of old games. Like seriously, you look at the Wii U with all this, and then you look at the Switch with this, and it's just like, come on man, go to your room. Regardless, we're not here to talk about that, we're here to talk about this menu. Now, yes, I realize that the 3DS and Wii were a bit cooler, but the Wii U at least is still trying to be something at least. We've got two different screens here, the bottom of which is where all your games are located. You don't get those cool little animations or a 3D model when selecting them, but each game plays a little song to go along with this JPEG, I guess. Again, not as cool, but still, it's better than nothing. I also like how they made the menu sleek without making it boring. In fact, the way I describe this menu is dreamy, like the icons, the background, the music, the entire thing just gives off a vibe, you know? The top screen has this parade of me's that, sure, nowadays spat off a bunch of random tips about different applications, but back in the day, it used to be magical. Why, you ask? Well... Miiverse was such a freaking trip back in the day, man. It was essentially a social media service built specifically for the Wii U, and later 3DS, where you could discuss games, share screenshots of stuff, and, you know, just shitpost. I honestly had a ton of fun with this service, though. Like, the fact that there was a place where you could post about New Super Mario Bros. DS in 2015 and actually have people to talk to, that was insane. But let's be real, the real reason Miiverse was great was because of the weird amount of crazy stuff people would post. It was a magical, magical time. And even better is that these posts would sometimes filter out into that previously mentioned top screen. It cracked me up constantly, you'd find the weirdest stuff. Sadly, Nintendo shut it down back in 2017, removing what was one of the coolest things they ever made. And I know it was kinda cringy, but I kinda miss it. Now, outside of Miiverse, there wasn't a ton to do, but there were a couple notable little things. The eShop here is hands down the best one Nintendo's ever done. The presentation is just so charming, dude. Like, everything from the menus down to the cute background music, it's all just neat. Another cool detail is that the music would actually change at different times of year. It even had its own unique holiday music. You could use the application Wii U Chat to talk with friends, or, you know, just get random calls from people on Miiverse that you didn't actually want to talk to. That was, uh, great. And I know it's not super exciting sounding, but the Wii U had the best console internet browser ever. Like you could put videos on the TV while searching for stuff on the bottom screen, and the touchscreen keyboard is so much better than trying to type with a controller. Now outside of that, there's not a whole lot else, and looking back it's obvious that this is technically where the decline started, but at least it tried, man. And that brings us to now. Like, 
I get it. This probably isn't that big of a deal. I mean, they still play games, the thing gaming consoles are kind of made to do, but I don't know, man. It just feels so hollow now. I miss the charm, the love, the detail, the stupid, meaningless stuff to mess around with. That was all part of the console experience, you know? Sure, when I look back at these consoles, the games are usually the first thing that comes to mind, but that still doesn't change the fact that these consoles themselves had so many memories attached to them. So many nights spent messing around making me's with a group of friends. So many afternoons spent listening to cringy Minecraft parodies that I honestly still kind of like. So many times where we just sat and vibed to the console menu. It's stuff like that that made consoles feel so special. With the way things are heading, what with these oversimplified, well, everything, I don't think we're ever going to get this back, and that's pretty depressing. But hey, who knows, right? 